I'm gay. Me too. I'm gay. <laughs>
the stereotypical conservative, um, considered all American guy who was very stuck in his ways and represented a lot of the 50s values. This show showed off how that person could be set in his ways and still maybe not understand everything, but he could be okay with it. And that was groundbreaking. I'm sure you're gonna show the Allen clip, clip from the Allen show. You have to. That's oh, there it is. So hard, but I, 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 I Ellen. Oh, I she just I've canceled realized. her show. That I am. Oh, I know what this is. I can't even say the word. I've never seen this actually. Why can't I say the word? I mean, why can't I just say? This is what it's like, honey. I mean, what is wrong? That why? Why do I have to be so ashamed? I mean, this is what it's like. Say the truth. I mean, be who I am. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just. Susan. I'm gay. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> oh, that was her mom. Oh my God, just that moment where you accidentally hit the mic and you just tell the world. But that moment was also, ah, and she hugged her too! I'm <laughs> This is a then controversial and now iconic clip from a 1997 episode of The Ellen Show in which her character comes out as lesbian, making this the first time a character in a television show openly announced that they were gay. It's also the first show to feature an openly gay actor playing an openly gay character. Mm -hmm. I know that there's some criticism to to how it was, how they handled it, I think. Like, it wasn't bold enough, or it took too long, or whatever, and it's like, golly, man, give somebody credit where credit is due. You don't know how difficult it was at that time. Like, everybody talks about how great this is, and it was great, and it, it was new, but, but what we seem to also forget is right around this same time, Matthew Shepard, was beat, brutally beaten, and left to die, tied up on a fence post out in the middle of nowhere. So while you ha we celebrate these gay characters coming out going, look how far we've come, you then turn around and have an incident like Matthew Shepard. She did a really good job of kind of, uh, you know, summarizing what it's like maybe growing up and all of those thoughts that you have in, in one quick like 15 second segment of her being like, oh, do I come out, do I not? And finally she just breaks free and says it. And you know, I know there's kids at home watching the show right now who feel that exact same way. And it's so easy to sit here, you know, as confident and prideful as I am because I've been out for a long time and say, you can do it, you know, make the jump but you have yourself and that's all that matters. And it, it's much better to live your most authentic self than anything else. I'm closed. Orange is the new black. Oh, orange is the new black. This show is great. We just want to ask you a question. Oh, I remember this scene. Spanish been saying how you still got your dick. That true? I saw this particular episode, it was very upsetting. What you got between your legs is your business, and what I got is mine. Maybe. Um, so my uh, man is out at Lexington, and he's having a real hard time. Hard. Meanwhile, you hiding out in here, pretending to be a Oh, no. Seems like you got it all figured out. You have any idea how ignorant you sound? I remember cringing while watching that scene. That was Laverne Cox as Sophia Bursette in Orange is the New Black, which was another show known for its diverse representation. Laverne broke barriers when she became the first openly transgender actor to be nominated for an Emmy Award because of her performance in the show. Nice! Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. I love Orange is the New Black. I'm sitting here and I feel this tightness in my chest and because I... You stopped the scene there, but it went on. They just beat her up and, you know, did all kinds of things there. It was much, much more upsetting. The world is changing constantly. I, I don't know. I think that kind of thing will always be in existence to some degree. Uh, perhaps maybe less and less as time goes by. One, like Laverne Cox is fantastic. Like anything she's in, absolutely amazing. So that moment of like them being like, oh, she's pretending like, no, she's they're not pretending like she is a woman. Laverne Cox is a trans person who played a trans person on Orange is the New Black. 
it's my personal opinion that she didn't get that job or that role because she was a trans person. She got that role because she's great at her job. She's a great actor. Glad that she was trans, but they didn't cast her that because she's trans, I don't think. They cast her because she knocked it out of the park. Laverne Cox is a working trans model, actress, musician. She does it all. That's what I want to see. I want to see all of my trans brothers and sisters, non-binaries, they's, them's, he, she's, whatever you be's, in the movies, in the televisions, on the YouTubes, anywhere that we can uh, consume media, they need to be there. We're here, we're queer, and we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, how did it go? Did you tell him? What's this show? Oh, this is that Disney Channel show, right? It wasn't the right time. That's okay. I've yeah. seen this. You'll know when it's- I've seen time. it here. Cyrus, help. In this I'm studio. Not the not other kids seem to be very supportive. Cyrus, help. I'm not recognizing anything here. Okay, well, that, of course, is Aunt Ruthie's kugel. Uh, that's your classic bagel and phlox. That's gefilte fish. Skip that. And I'm gay. Me too. Oh, nice. Nice and subtle. I appreciate that. Yeah? <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Cool. Nice. That is the correct reaction, I feel like. That's how I came out to my best friend. One of my best friends is it was like, da, 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 and I'm gay. Now this is a clip that we've covered before, but this was the first time a Disney Channel character said that they were gay on screen back in 2019. 2019, I All thought right. it was earlier. I'm surprised it was that recent. I'm glad it's there because growing up, I didn't have that. The more exposure you have to content like this, the less stigmatized it feels. So I think for like young kids watching it, it's a nice thing and not even necessarily just for like, people who are a part of the community, but you know, just for like everyone to see that this is like, a, like acceptable and like, it should be something that is that easy. There is a line somewhere there, but I just have no idea where it is. I don't want to expose children to sexual issues prior to their being able to emotionally and intellectually handle them. But gay is a couple of different things. It's a sexual issue, but it's also a cultural issue, I think. It's people loving each other, and that's what maybe the, the lesson should be for kids. It's just another example of someone that loves somebody else. This season, my girls will make... Yes! Yes, finally! <gasps> oh, yes! RuPaul's Drag Race is back. Woo! Oh my god, my friends love this show. Please, so good. I only watch this show with my friends in, in college, but like we will all sit around and just watch this. Oh my god, season 13! I can't believe there are 13 seasons of this. Competition. Where? <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race. All right, all right, RuPaul's Drag Race, so importante. RuPaul's Drag Race has definitely changed how people interact with the LGBTQ community because it's not just a, okay, they exist and they are somewhere over there. It's more like a they're, they're meant to be celebrated, they're meant to be front stage, and they're meant to be fabulous! That's the difference between drag and the trans community. I mean, there is some overlap, obviously, but it's, but it's, I don't want people to look at that and say, oh, that must be what all trans people are all about. Costumes are outrageous, and the hairdos, and the makeup, and all of that sort of stuff is, is all way out there. And so I can see why some people who don't really know anything about this would look at that and say, oh, that's what trans people are, and it isn't. Drag Race talks about a, a lot in the gay experience. If you want to learn more about, you know, sexual health, boyfriends, relationships, three ways, you know, how to do drag, how to jump into a death drop, how to, you know, get yourself off drugs. Uh, they talk about all sorts of different topics. It's not just, you know, boys going into a closet, putting on makeup and dresses and starting down the runway, there's a lot more to it. So that's all the clips that we have for you today, but overall, what are your thoughts on how LGBTQ people have been portrayed on TV throughout history? Wonderful. I, I, don't, I mean, it's it's good and bad and, and, and groundbreaking. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to watch like straight people like be frustrated about their relationships. So like, <laughs> like having shows where you can kind of see yourself is like, the main character is a little bit, you know, it's better. Like also yet again, like I think the more that you see that, I think 
the better and easier it makes it to be like a part of like the LGBTQIA like community nowadays. I do kind of like now that we're into the point where characters aren't just coming out, they're just gay. You know what I mean? Like they'll say, oh, this is my husband or, or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. It's, it's not a made a big deal of. It's like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I have mixed feelings. I, on the one hand, I can really sympathize with people who say, you know, I don't really care what you do in your private life. Just, I don't want it, just don't shove it in my face. On the other hand, what people see is, you know, today I'm watching something that makes me uncomfortable and I watch it and, and every day and by next week I'm less uncomfortable and less uncomfortable. So I can see that side of it too. The more exposure we have of it, the more it seems normal, which I'm all for. There is an area of queerdom that is not often talked about because it's not as appealing and that is uh, being ace, being asexual. We're also looking at trying to portray gender fluidity. And one of the things that we don't always realize is that sometimes as a teenager, you're going to feel a different way about yourself than when you are an adult. The fact that it's been 2019, 2019 was the first time a Disney Channel show had a character come out to a friend. Um, it's a little disheartening, but I don't want to complain because I am so fortunate to grow up in a day and age where I am able to express myself because 20, 30 years ago, that was not the case. It, there will always be work that we can do, you know, and that goes for racism, misogyny, sexism, you know, there's always work we can do. Nobody is perfect, everybody makes mistakes, and there's always, unfortunately, going to be some form of evil. But if you educate yourself, and you are an ally, and you are a positive light in this world, I can promise you, you will reflect onto many other people and change lives, and that's what we need. There is work to be done. Thank you for watching this episode. What did you think about these influential moments? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy Pride. Stay queer. Hey guys, it's Sierra. If you want to get notified every time we post a new episode, then click that notification bell down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, bye guys.